We're going to take a look to one of the top players, and this is P.J. Hall, a guy that just got offered from the Clemson Tigers. Emerson Phillips averages 14 points per game, 7.9 rebounds, and uh, about two blocks per game. This is a young man that dictates the defense of what the Dorman Cavaliers like to do. Hall, 6'9", and a junior, South Carolina, Georgia, Tennessee, Florida, Clemson among the offers for Hall, and joined in the Dorman starting lineup by the outstanding Miles Tate, who's got several Division I offers as well. We'll tell you about him when we come back. We'll get keys now before we hit the starting lineups here. Tyler, one key for each team. Let's look at the keys for the Gaffney Indians. Wow. Contain Miles Tate. Get a body and contain Tate. He's a shooter. Contest his shots. Don't let him get in rhythm. Pressure defense. Also, get the Andre Lindsay. Find him some space when he's on. Gaffney has a chance. For the Dorman Cavaliers, the defense, as we said, goes as P.J. Hall goes. And they got to force turnovers. Gaffney's young. They're going to do that. Forcing those turnovers, getting an early lead on this young Gaffney team getting them the disadvantage as Gaffney's on the road in this beautiful venue. A lot of crowds starting to pour in here to Roebuck, South Carolina. Two state championship winning programs on opposite ends of the standings right now in this region in Class 5A. We'll get a break. We'll come back. Tip off of tonight's ball game coming up next. The NFHS Learning Center is the leader in online education for the interscholastic community. At NFHSLearn.com, you can find over 60 courses for coaches, administrators, officials, parents, students, and performing arts programs, including over 25 free courses such as concussion in sports, heat illness prevention, sudden cardiac arrest, and protecting students from abuse. For more information, visit the NFHS Learning Center. Welcome back, Emerson Phillips with Tyler Cup, along with our crew from Play On Sports here on the NFHS Network. And Tyler, one of the great things about Facebook Watch is that it's interactive viewing. Interactive, we get to see what you folks think as we are calling the action. Who do you think is going to win tonight, and what are you looking forward to see on Facebook Watch? Dorman Cavaliers, Gaffney Indians tonight about a minute and a half away from tip-off here. Tyler, interactive viewing on Facebook Watch. Interactive viewing. We're excited about this. Tell us who you think is going to win. How about some point prediction totals maybe on Facebook Watch and let us know where you are watching around the country, whether it be in South Carolina or among the other states among us. Who will win? Prediction time the Facebook comment section. Let us know who you think will win today's game here on the NFHS Network and Facebook Watch. There you go. Get involved with the broadcast here. We appreciate you joining us tonight here on the NFHS Network on Facebook Watch. And we've got uh, Division One offers for several players in this game here tonight. There's your starting lineup for Gaffney, a young ball club 
Tyler with only three players returning with varsity experience off last year's team. Yeah, it should tell you something that one of our star players isn't even a returner from last year. They've got a lot of young talent. Uh, they lost a lot from a year ago, so this is a team in transition. New coach, young players, but they've got some talent on this team, and we'll see them tonight. Lindsey Tate, Robertson, Peeler, and Davidson getting the start tonight for the injured Stan Ellis. Ellis aggravated a knee injury that he initially suffered in football season. He re-aggravated it on Tuesday night against Malden. And Ellis has got seven or eight Division I football offers. A number of ACC schools have offered the junior Stan Ellis, who is an outstanding defensive back for the Gaffney Indians football team. Now, Dorman Cavaliers, two-time defending state champ. Tyler, they had never won a state title in basketball. Thomas Ryan took over 12 years ago. And two years ago, he won the first state championship in the history of this school. Last year, they went back to back. Yeah, Thomas Ryan, one of the best coaches currently in the state of South Carolina in terms of winning percentage. He does it the right way here at Dorman, and uh, they've got a very talented team. Talon Cooper headed to play for Moorhead State. We've talked about Miles Tate and P.J. Hall getting numerous offers from around the country. P.J. Hall just got offered from the Clemson Tigers. Miles Tate has an offer from the University of South Carolina, among others, including Wofford. Wofford College of Charleston, Coastal Carolina, and offers continuing to roll in. There's P.J. Hall. We mentioned Tennessee, South Carolina, Georgia, Florida, Clemson among the offers for Hall. 6'9", and a junior, and Tate is just a junior as well. Kamal Desour, a 6'5 senior, along with uh, Jack Renwick, the Wofford baseball commit. Renwick is the shortstop for the Dorman baseball team, and Coach uh, Ryan described him as a glue player, uh, one of the hardest working kids you'll ever see on a basketball court. I talked to some local media here in the upstate, and they said, you're probably not going to be there to see Jack Renwick, but he's going to be a player that you're going to enjoy watching. He is the glue, and uh, he's the guy that gets this team going each and every night. Yeah, hustle player, effort player, does a lot of the little things that will not show up in the box score that can help you win back-to-back -back state championships. So there's Coach Ryan. He's got his back to us here in the middle of the huddle with an arm raised. There he is. Lexington High School grad, graduate of USC Aiken, which is currently ranked seventh in the country in Division II basketball. Thomas Ryan, 12th year head man here at Dorman, played for the legendary Bailey Harris at Lexington High School. Mm -hmm. And there's Philip McCam, a Gaffney grad, a two-time state champion Gaffney Indian, playing for legendary coach Mark Huff. Coach Huff won five state championships, two of them when Philip McCam was on the varsity team. Dorman winning the first matchup earlier this year when region play began. They beat Gaffney 50-32 to on the road. So we are underway. Dorman in the white, Gaffney in the black. Eight-minute quarter, South Carolina High School round ball. Hall with a nice pass down low and a two-hand jam to open the action by Kamal Desor. Yeah, good ball movement there. You saw the attention that Hall got down low in the paint, and Desor was wide open, cutting in for the baseline. Hall drew attention in the high post and fed it to the baseline to Desor for the jam. Gaffney, inexperienced Gaffney club, turns it over. Miles Tate's got it. He'll pull up from 14. Oh, that's pretty. Not only did he pull up there, EP, but there was contact on that shot, and he was still able to make a shot in the face of a defender. Dorman's got maybe the top two junior prospects in the state in Hall and Tate. Tate, the six-foot guard. Hall, the six-nine post player. You know, P.J. Hall coming in was one of our players to watch, obviously, but Miles Tate was the 5A player of the year a year ago in high school basketball. Yeah, and he was instrumental in the Dorman State Championship run two years ago as a freshman. So, you know, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to see, Tyler, that Hall and Tate have a chance to go four for four state championships years in high school. They won it their freshman year and their sophomore year. They're number one in the state right now in this, their junior year. So Gaffney will try to swoop down the right side of the lane with Andre Lindsay, the 10th grader, kept alive and a nice feed there by the Indians, but the shot wouldn't go down. And Dorman's got a rebound. P.J. Hall contested three shots on that defensive possession for Dorman. And there's a nice little cut to the basket. Talon Cooper, the Moorhead State commit. Gaps in that Gaffney defense. Dorman quick to exploit. And the Cavs are up to a 6 to nothing lead. Just a minute and 32 seconds into this ball game. Tyler, we knew it was going to be an uphill battle for Gaffney tonight. You know, they're 0-7 in the region. They're 5-9 overall. 
And here's Hall with the alert pass to Cooper for the dunk. Yeah, you said it, the alert pass, the attention that he garnered there on that possession allowed the back cut to the basket, and there's the pull-up jumper contested shot by Miles Tate. And it was DeSore that got the dunk before that bucket by Tate, the teardrop swish. I told somebody last year, somebody asked me about Miles Tate. We'd seen him win the state championship his freshman year. He was en route to winning it again last year. They asked me about Tate. I said he's got a very polished mid-range game mm -hmm. for a young fella. Yeah. And I think that's what college scouts like about him, and he's an exceptional three-point shooter as well. He will be stroking threes tonight without a doubt. So Gaffney against the Dorman press. Now Dorman will drop back here. The Indians will walk it up with 6.20 left in the opening period. A 6 to nothing Dorman jump tonight. Now Gaffney on the board with that nice drive on the right side of the goal. That was 23. Nyan Peeler, 6'2 senior. Nine point per player score, nine point per game score for Gaffney. He's their second leading scorer, and they're going to need him tonight with Stan Ellis. Yeah, Peeler actually had 17 points in their last loss a couple of games ago. And that was a big performance for him. That was his career high. Hall positioned himself for the rebound. Now Gaffney front court with Delon Cooper. Skip it over to Jack Renwick. Jack Renwick from the land of three. Ba baseball and basketball, two-sport athlete for Renwick. Big basket. Renwick, the Wofford baseball commit in the starting lineup for this two-time, two-time defending. Dorman State Championship Club. Says a shortstop, EP. Yes, sir. Kick out to Lindsey in the corner. That shot banked no good. Hall got a hand on it, deflected off of him. Tate got a hand on it. It's back to Hall. Front court now for Kamal Desor. Pull up. Yes. Desor with four points, but I tell you, the rebounding right now for Hall, he's all over the place. He's got to have five or six rebounds already. Here's Desor defending a tough shot made by Gaffney. I think that was Rook Tate. It was Rook Tate, the 5'8 senior. Somehow got that shot up, and when Hall gets the ball in that low, he'll be tough to stop tonight. His first points of the game, but he backed down a defender and put the shot up and in. Renwick blocks the shot. Jack Renwick came from behind and blocked the shot of Andre Bender and put the shot up and in. Renwick blocks the shot. Jack Renwick came from behind and blocked the shot of but he is also very quick to pass when he knows he's got a man or two guarding him. And I got to tell you, McCam is doing all he can in terms defensively of getting his players double team, triple team on the star players. But DeSore is having a field day right now. He's got seven points. Lindsay got the shot up over the swat attempt by Hall. Cavs front court. Tate got it right back to Cooper. No good from three. And a good box out by Lindsay for the Gaffney rebound. 16 to four, Gaffney. First quarter of action. Crossover dribble here to run over the right hand. Good, but what's the call? Offensive foul. Yep, offensive foul. That was a good layout by the Dorman player. A couple of Cavaliers set to check in. Tyrese Pilgrim, one of them. There's the runner, and that's that was Hall. Yeah, Hall. Clearly in position and got the correct call. I tell you what we've noticed so far, Emerson, he's a smart basketball player. He knows where he is on the court, good ball of movement, gets his uh, teammates involved, very good defensively, is very active, keeps his hands up, very smart basketball player so far, what we've seen to P.J. Hall. P.J. Hall, 14 points, eight rebounds a game with the multiple power five division one offers. This is Miles Tate to Cooper into the corner. And that is number three, Sam Long. First off, first off the bench, Sam Long, he comes right into the game and drills a three-pointer. The shooting percentage is off the charts right now for Dorman. Yep. I believe they've only missed one shot. Yeah, we talked so much about Hall and Tate and Talon Cooper. But DeSour plays a big role, and we've already seen threes here in the first quarter from Jack Renwick and Sam Long. There's a block shot by DeSour. I like the athleticism of DeSour at 6'5". Yeah. You know, we don't talk about him a lot either because it's all Hall and Tate, but DeSour is a fantastic high school basketball player. Step back and a travel call. That was interesting, Tyler. The dribble drive by Gaffney, and there's Lindsey dribbling into a double team. 
that stopped his forward progress. So he stepped back, and that's what caused the, the travel. So far, what I've seen from Dorman defensively, they're very smart. They do a good job of switching and staying on their assignment, keeping their hands active, and not being flat-footed on defense. Skip it to Tate. Tate can pull the trigger on a three. In and out and in. <laughs> In and out, off the window and in. They've been trying to set that up the last couple of possessions. Tate has played there on the perimeter. Steal here by Dorman. And that was Tyrese Pilgrim. Cooper tracks it down on the far sideline. Tate will pull into the lane and hit Sam Long. Offensive board, DeSore. Tate knives in, lays it back for an open three, short. Rebound will pull into the lane and hit Sam Long. Offensive board, DeSore. Tate knives in, lays it back for an open three, short. Tate knives in, lays it back for an open three, short. Good ball movement by the Cavs. Another offensive foul call. Gaffney setting up a fence. Inside here, Tyler, and that's two charges they've drawn on Gaffney in the first quarter. Yeah, and if you're a Gaffney fan, this is the worst possible start, obviously. Dorman has uh, taken advantage of the turnovers. They have taken advantage of the unfortunate poor shooting by the Indians. The shots they are getting off haven't got off a whole many. They're getting contested, and Dorman has really taken advantage here in this first quarter, 26 to Come to a close in the first. Beautiful Dorman Arena here on the Dorman High School campus and just a fantastic place to watch a basketball game. It's kind of got a retro feel to it. Mm -hmm. And good sight lines, not a bad seat in the house. We had about 3,500 here last year for the Zion Williamson show when Dorman beat Spartanburg Day, beat Zion Williamson's club right here on this floor last year. A game we brought you live here on Facebook Watch on the NFHS Network. End of one, Dorman by 20 big ones. The NFHS Learning Center is the leader in online education for the interscholastic community. At NFHSLearn.com, you can find over 60 courses for coaches, administrators, officials, parents, students, and performing arts programs, including over 25 free courses such as concussion in sports, heat illness prevention, sudden cardiac arrest, and protecting students from abuse. For more information, visit the NFHS Learning Center. Back to Spartanburg, South Carolina. Remember, fans, you can watch this game not only on the NFHS Network, but also on the Facebook Watch tab on the NFHS Network Hoops page on Facebook. Dorman by 20. Tyler mentioned earlier, right as the game started, that uh, Dorman beat Gaffney 50-32 to earlier this season. So tonight mm -hmm. marks the start of the second half of the region schedule. So that you're getting into the second matchup of the year with all the teams in your region. So, important to note, Tyler, that Gaffney had Stan Ellis that night. Yep. And he is out tonight with that knee injury, but Coach McCam said they do expect to have Stan Ellis back Tuesday night of next week for Gaffney's next ball game. Little different look for Gaffney defensively coming out in a 2-3 zone now. Hall out to Tate. Oh, that's bringing rain on the high arcer. And give the assist to P.J. Hall. The attention garners down low. Miles Tate rarely has an open shot like that. He takes it and drains it. That's really where Tate butters his bread. He's got that nice mid-range game, but he makes his money from the land of three. Gaffney in the black here. Runner down the right side of the lane, back iron, but an offensive board. First offensive rebound, I believe, in a ball game for Gaffney. And it made by Malik Phillips, the junior, just in off the bench, and he earns a couple of foul shots. So he will go to the line, and let's take a look at the replay. Hall, oh, the no-look pass. 
Oh my. He was looking at center court and passed that to the wing. Mm. Yeah, he knew Tate was open over there and knew exactly where that ball needed to go, didn't he? So Dorman just very polished in the half court. You know, they prefer off tempo. They like to make it a 94 foot game because they got the athletes to beat you that way but very comfortable in the half court as well. They win a lot of games you know, around a 50 point mark. That's the winning number for them. Yep. They beat Gaffney 50 to 32 to start the region play this year. So Malik Phillips, the 6'3 junior, hit the second free throw and there is PJ Hall, a little jumping skyhook action. 6'9, oh, Tyler, I don't know how you keep him out of that spot, but he'll score all night from there. Mm. 31-7, Dorman, the two-time defending 5A state champ. Three ball for the Gaffney Indians. That's Andre Lindsay, our key player tonight for Gaffney. Yeah, and those are his first points of the game. If they want any chance of getting this thing close and getting back in it, Andre Lindsay has got to hit more baskets just like that. Lindsay rocking the frosted tips as he knocked in that last shot. The three ball, 31-10. Gaffney just trying to get something going here. Dorman pulls the trigger on another three. Jack Renwick, offensive rebound on the backside, and the assist to the cutting Tyrese Pilgrim. Boy, Jack Renwick does it all, doesn't he? Rebound, block shots, assists. Man, fun player to watch. He's a gamer. Dribble drive with a left hand, blocked out of bounds. It was Hall and it was Renwick. I think Hall blocked it, but Renwick helping out there also. You know, we've mentioned it a couple times, Emerson, but it cannot be overly stated as we're going to take a look at the replay here. There is Renwick dragging down the rebound. He's going to drive in. Oh, and look at the dish and the finish. Pretty finish by Pilgrim on that double clutch. But it cannot be overstated. Dominic Davidson is having a tall task to step in for Stan Ellis for Gaffney. Stan Ellis, one of the best players for Gaffney, injured out of this game. A guy that fills up the stat sheet is Ellis, 6'1 junior, eight points per game, five rebounds, three and a half assists. That's a lot in high school basketball. And Davidson has to step in, and you could already tell offensively they don't really have that identity. They haven't been able to set that offense up. They haven't really had that opportunity trying to slow things down. Dorman's defense has just been too good. Yep, and this is probably the last place in the state you want to play if you don't have offensive identity. But you know, Gaffney knew what they were coming into here tonight, and I think Dorman had to know that uh, with Gaffney not being in full strength tonight, that certainly played to their favor. So a very clean first half of play. Just four fouls on Gaffney, two on Dorman. Neither team in the bonus yet. There's P.J. Hall, another you know, three or four footer right there, right in front of the rim. He's had several of those tonight. Hall's having a big first half. He's got six. He's also rebounded and blocked shots. He's drawn a charge. He's done a little bit of everything for Dorman. Cooper didn't want the three. He'll drive baseline. Wrap around the pass out to Jack Renwick, whose runner is good. Boy, he's fun. He, he's going to be an outstanding baseball player, but i tell you what, he is really fun. Five points in the first half, but he's done so much more. He's got a couple of blocked shots. He's also got a couple of assists and a three-pointer. Wofford University located here in Spartanburg, so he's going to stay at home for college, and Wofford is an outstanding academic institution. He has to play some college baseball for Jack Renwick. Re Jack Renwick. So let us know where you're watching from tonight. You can comment in the Facebook comment section. We want to know where you're watching. Give a shout out to a few of our viewers during the broadcast. We'll have that coming up for you shortly here. Thanks for joining us tonight on the NFHS Network on Facebook Live. Facebook Watch. So whistle here. And they got P.J. Hall for a foul going after the rebound, his first of the ball game. Just a third of the half on Dorman. 37 to 10. And we still got 4.15 left in the first half. Pressure defense by Dorman. Yeah, a little press that time for Dorman, a little half court press. They put a lot of pressure on their opponents and it has given fits for a team that is using a backup point guard, as you see on your screen, Neon Peeler. 
6'2 senior. He's a guy that has the ability to score the basketball, but unfortunately, he's only got one basket tonight. He's going to check out. 37-10, Dorman with four to play here on the NFHS Network. Dominique Davis, 6'1", junior, inbounds for Gaffney. Into the backcourt it goes. And a double team immediately on Walker Camp. And Renwick got that ball on the floor. It looked, but he got it for travel call. But I think the whistle came because it just didn't look right. Yep. So Gaffney's got it back here. Boy, hard to believe Gaffney 0-7 in the region. You know, and we knew it was going to be a difficult transition with Coach Huff leaving and so few returning players off of last year's team that finished second in the region. To line Cooper the steal. Oh, he went alley-oop off the glass, and the pass was off the mark. Well, if Gaffney is going to get something going here with only 10 points here at the three-minute mark of the second quarter, now's the time. There's a bit of a lull in this game, and this is an opportunity for them to make some shots. Texas in the house tonight. Lewis Ailman. Orlando. Dorman by 16. I don't know. Lake Village, Arkansas. <laughs> What's up, Cornelius? Jerry Wells from Baton Rouge. Gamecocks take on those LSU Tigers tomorrow, Baton Rouge. Chris Australia. Perth, Australia. Oh, man. All right, here's P.J. Hall. P.J. Hall with eight. Pontiac, Michigan. Steve Atkins. What's up? So Hall's got the, all right. Spartanburg flavor. Denmark, Denmark, all over the world. We were talking about all over the country in the pregame. All over the world. Brazil, outstanding. Welcome in tonight. Spartanburg, South Carolina is where we are. And we're at Dorman High School, where the number one ranked 5A team in South Carolina, Dorman. And that is the largest classification we have in South Carolina. So these are, you know, this, this is big boy basketball here mm -hmm. in South Carolina. Dorman is the only program to ever win a 5A state title here in the state because we just expanded to five classes two years ago. They won the first two, and they're looking to make it three in a row this year. They had never won a state basketball championship prior. Bucket and a foul for number four, Kamal Desor. Kamal Desor is having himself a game here tonight. Gets the basket and the foul. He'll go to the line for the three-point play. So Dorman... Really has kind of taken the torch from Gaffney. Gaffney last won a state championship in 2012, and they've won six all-time. Coach Huff won three in a row in the early 2000s before he stepped down at the end of last year. So, again, Gaffney, I wouldn't say rebuilding, but they are certainly restructuring the talent in their program. Fundamentally, Coach McCam obviously has not changed what was an outstanding program, arguably the best in the state over the last 20 years in Gaffney. But he has made one addition as a foul is called here. I believe they'll get P.J. Hall. Yep. At the block. P.J. Hall was in on that. So yeah, they gave it to Tate, not Hall. Tate, okay. First of the game on Tate. So the foul shooter here for Gaffney is number 12, Spencer Robertson, just a 10th grader. You know, one of the good things about having a young team, Tyler Gaffney's taking his licks this year, but all these young players are getting experience this year. Watch out for Gaffney next year and the year after. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, talking to Coach Philip McCam, he's a guy that earned this job. A lot of people think if he's, you know, played here, he's coached for 10 years, they thought, oh, he was probably the coach of waiting. No. Mark Huff, according to him, did not have anything to do with the hiring of McCam. He had to earn this position and had to interview it just like everybody else did. So he earned this position, and they believe in Coach McCam. Yeah, he was an assistant for 10 years at Gaffney under Coach Huff and ultimately landed the head job of this fantastic program that will be back. Might not be this year, but Gaffney will be back, rest assured. P.J. Hall with the left hand. <laughs> oh, Oh, my. Lindsey pulls the trigger on a three. The ball knocked around. An offensive rebound, a rare offensive rebound for Gaffney. Shot blocked from behind. Another offensive board and a stick in for number 12, the 10th grader, Spencer Robertson. Spencer Robertson, one of those young players we talked about for Gaffney on the rise. 6'3", 10th grader, averages 5.5 points and 4.5 and rebounds per game. Still a 31-point ball. Let's make it 33 and one for Dorman. 11 is Talon Cooper, the Moorhead State commit. 
Yeah, Talon Cooper is an interesting story. He's a guy that is playing on his fourth different team with his fourth different high school. He played with Spartanburg Christian, uh, Spartanburg Day, I should say, Spartanburg High School, and played with another school in the area his freshman year as he makes a cut to the basket. And in between two defenders drawing the foul. He finished it with his left, and he is a right-hand shooter, as you can see from that foul shot. So, But he's trying to finish off his high school career with a state championship and headed to play for Moorhead State out of Kentucky. Yeah, well, Moorhead State in the Ohio Valley Conference. So three D1 players in the starting lineup here for Dorman as they try to make it three straight state championships here in 2019. State championships will be crowned at the Colonial Life Arena in Columbia, home of the University of South Carolina Gamecocks. That's Frank Martin's home venue. Coming up in early March, steal here by Sam Long. Oh, and he missed the bunny. He missed the layup, but cleaned up in there by the 10th grader. Earl Burgess. Earl Burgess, thank you. Yeah, Earl Burgess is a, a guy on the rise. You talked about three Division I players in this starting lineup. Burgess could be one of those guys in two yep, years. Yep, at 6'5", you got to believe there's a very good chance. Under a minute to play. Burgess takes that feed from Cooper and draws a foul. So while Burgess goes to the line, hey folks, coming up at halftime, a video courtesy of Slam, giving us a look inside a day in the life of Sierra Canyon's Cassius Stanley. Stanley and the top-ranked Trailblazers take on Crossroads later tonight on NFHS Network Hoops. So a doubleheader here tonight. You'll have Crossroads taking on Sierra Canyon. Outstanding. Yeah, we had a video last year. We were here for Dorman and Spartanburg Day. Similar video last year. Zion Williamson, dunks, dunks, <laughs> dunks, block shots, dunks. We both did a lot of Zion Williamson broadcast <laughs> last year at the Skis of Tournament. I loved the dunk counter. We predicted how many dunks there were going to be, and we had Facebook Live interact with that. That was yeah. a lot of fun. The one game I'll never forget, Zion Williamson, uh, his junior year, the Chick-fil-A Classic Holiday Basketball Tournament, nationally known tournament in Columbia, South Carolina, hosted by Richland Northeast High School. Tournament director Gary Fulmer. Brought in Zion Williamson. And Williamson, I, I worked the game as Gaffney misses a jumper. Williamson set a tournament record with 52 points, and he had 10 dunks. And there's the layup off the run out by Ty Pilgrim. 20 seconds left in the half. 51 in the half here. Tyler, there's only 16 minutes and a half of high school basketball. 51 on the board for Dorman. This is as good of a basketball game Dorman, I think, will play all year. They have been sensational on both ends of the court. They shot an extremely high percentage there in that first quarter. Good if it goes. Oh, the bank is open. Nighttime banking hours for number five, Ty Pilgrim, the senior guard for Dorman. How about 54 in the first half? We still got 16 minutes to come. And we got a 42-point difference here at halftime. Have mercy. RJ's a little light skin weirdo from Texas. I don't mess with RJ like that. Hey, RJ. If I have a wide open dunk, I'm telling him. That's bad jelly. That's terrible jelly. Can you use the backboard on it, jelly? Ooh, sheesh. I gotta get that jelly right. That's bad jelly. That's great jelly. That's terrific jelly. That's not for me, bro. This jelly, it's not for me, bro. I can't do it. Me? Yeah. Obviously. I hope you start yourself. Number two. Okay. Number What's his name? Jaden. Okay, yep. Jaden Daniels. Josh Christopher. Okay. Jalen Green. Yep. How many is that? Is that four? That's four. That's four. And 23 Kyrie. Yeah, that lineup crazy. That lineup, that lineup's the killer lineup. That's the killer lineup. What up, boy? Am I starting or no? No. That's crazy. I mean, I think the gameplay is just giving the ball to Kyrie, the Dykeman legend. 
So the game plan, first play, is give it to Kyrie oh. and see what he's talking about. All right? Very simple. And if he up, cut his water off. I like the game plan. Hey, you got the, you got the first play? First play, give the ball to you, let the diamond legend eat. Bro, I need a silky. This is different. Hold this, man. This, this is a different environment. Fucking silky, boy. Oh, is that your team? That's the team, right? You your team? Yeah, that's your team. That's I'm coming out here more. Yeah. Bad tunes, bad tunes. Great tunes, what are you talking about? Yeah. Hey, so do we have to move off the court or can we stay right here? We can stay right here. Everybody's always on the court. This fun, bro. Good thing. <laughs> The first ever slam classic is over. We were lit, man. It was a great environment. I wish I was a junior so I could be here one more year. Come here again for volume two, but it was amazing, man. The NFHS Learning Center is the leader in online education for the interscholastic community. At NFHSLearn.com, you can find over 60 courses for coaches, administrators, officials, parents, students, and performing arts programs, including over 25 free courses such as concussion in sports, heat illness prevention, sudden cardiac arrest, and protecting students from abuse. For more information, visit the NFHS Learning Center. As large a margin at halftime as you'll see all season here with Dorman leading Gaffney 54 to 12. 
NFHS Network Hoops here on Facebook Watch. Glad to have you back here at Dorman High School, Emerson Phillips with Tyler Cup. And Tyler, we're going to have a study here in half-court basketball. We're going to talk about ball movement. Dorman's going to show us how it's done with P.J. Hall. Dorman is so well coached. They're well disciplined. They attack on the defensive end. They're efficient on the offensive end. And we're going to see a highlight package of the first half. A little bit of everything from this squad. And look at the cut to the basket, the ball movement there, finding the open man, unselfish basketball. P.J. Hall with the no-look pass, quick out of his hands for the three-pointer in the corner. Look at the attention that he draws, and just look at that. Quick passes, finding the open man. And boy, they move it so quickly on offense, don't they? There's P.J. Hall with the hook shot down low. He's got eight points, double digits on rebounds, and he scores it down on the low post so many different ways. So many different ways. P.J. Hall with the double coverage, turn around, one-handed layup there. And what a first half. Hall and Tate lead Dorman with eight points, 54 to 12. Cavaliers top ranked team in South Carolina class 5A. And let's talk about Miles Tate a little bit. Tyler, we talked about PJ Hall with the multiple power five division one offers. Tate's got a handful of D1 offers as well. Offered by South Carolina and getting looks from Clemson among other schools along with Walford. And look at the pull up jumper there, contested shot. And he's gonna take one in the corner. For the three, the shooter's roll for Miles Tate. We're going to see him right here. And the new look pass from Hall down from the wing. Probably should have got the foul on the end there. But Miles Tate gets it to go. Eight points for Tate, eight points for Hall. The leading scorer for the Dorman Cavaliers, Kamal DeSore. He's got 13. So I stand corrected. Kamal DeSore has got 13 to lead Dorman, eight apiece for Tate and Hall. And Dorman just had everything go its way in that first half. Gaffney without its best player, Stan Ellis, tonight. And no offensive identity to speak of, only 12 points in the half. So it's just a tough night for Gaffney and everything going Dorman's way. They even banked in about a 30-footer at the horn to go to halftime. Well, Emerson, this is just one of those games where Gaffney is trying to still figure out who they are. I mean, 0-7 in conference play. There's a slight chance they can come around and still make the postseason. But the bottom line is they are finding out the best of the best in the state of South Carolina. And if they want to be the best, they're facing the best right now in the Dorman Cavaliers, number one in the state of South Carolina. Gaffney's going to get figured out. A lot of tradition. They invest in the sport of basketball, and they will be back. But this year and tonight, it's Dorman's night. Country night here at Dorman High School in Roebuck, South Carolina. As the Dorman Cavaliers warm up to begin the second half. and Shout good. out to the Dorman Lady Cavaliers. The Dorman Ladies got the win, 67-42 to 42 over Gaffney earlier tonight. There it is, country night. Oh, man, do you own any flannel, Emerson Phillips? I do, in fact. Do you? But I'm not, I, 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 yeah, one, one or two flannel shirts. Yes, I do. <laughs> you don't own any flannel? Uh, no, <laughs> I do not. Absolutely not. Well, you are... Uh, you're not as long in the tooth as I am, nope. Tyler. So, yeah. No cowboy hats either. <laughs> no, I don't. I do not own a cowboy hat or boots for that matter. <laughs> but a lot of these Dorman students do. <laughs> Boy, this has been a fun game to call, seeing a showcase of great athleticism and outstanding talented players here for the Dorman Cavaliers, as you see the Gaffney cheerleaders. But what about this venue, Emerson? I know this is your second game. This is my first. I mean, you walk in, you immediately think, you know, high D2, small Division I. I mean, this is a gorgeous venue here. Kind of reminds me a little bit of the College of Charleston. Follow your school, visit nfhsnetwork.com, and become a member for free. Then follow your school to receive reminders when your team has a game. And don't forget, fans, the NFHS Network will feature top basketball games on Facebook Watch throughout the winter. NFHS Network Hoops is your home for great basketball all winter long. And we've got a double header. Sit tight. Later on tonight, we will have Sierra Canyon taking on the Trailblazers of Crossroads. Kasha Stanley featured in that one. Yeah, a lot of smiles for Dorman after you ring up 54 on the cash register in the first half. Well, and here's something that we're going to see here in the second half we talked about with Thomas Ryan before the game. I don't believe we brought it up in the first half of the broadcast. You had asked him 
you know, in years past, you've been so deep. You've had 11, 12 guys that you've been able to function in five in, five off. Well, they've only got about eight deep, and he's going to get a lot of guys some playing time here with a deficit this big. And this is going to be huge for the Dorman Cavaliers come crunch time in the playoffs, not just in those later rounds, but in the state championship. Yeah, Dorman 16-3, and three, and all three of their losses have come to schools from outside the state of South Carolina. They lost to Oak Hill. They lost to Charlotte Christian. And they lost the championship game of the Chick-fil-A Classic in Columbia to Salesian out of California. So in those games against national competition, Tyler, they're playing their best players. They're playing a seven or eight player rotation, right. like you said. So now that they're in region play and they can build, in some cases, a 42-point lead by halftime, they're playing more players. So, right, I asked Coach Ryan, I said, what are you emphasizing? What are you working on right now? He said, we need to build depth. And I said, well, how do you do that? I said, there's a three-pointer for Jack Renwick, just a tremendous role player. And I think a model high school basketball player and student, for that matter, I mentioned he's headed to Wofford on a baseball scholarship. I'm going to say model student athlete. There aren't many players today anymore that do the multi-sports and do it well. You know, sometimes these baseball guys, you know, they don't play the basketball or the football. They play the travel ball and they hang out. But Renwick is wanting to win a state championship, not just on the baseball field, but also on the basketball court. Yeah, he's already got two rings. Very commendable for high school athletes in 2019. Just a, just a junior, Jack Renwick. So Renwick, Hall, and Tate have all got another year of high school left. That's bad news for 5A teams here in South Carolina. Good news for Dorman. 6.50 to play third quarter here. You see the score all dormant tonight. They came out hitting a couple of threes, and it was you know, not their star players. Renwick hit a three. Sam Long hit a three. It's not just these big-name players that we're talking about. Kamal DeSore. Kamal DeSore has played well. There's Gaffney with a three. Their second three-pointer of the ball game, and it's Nyan Peeler knocking that one in. Yep, he's got five on the night. Averages nine per game. He had a career high earlier this week with 17. P.J. Hall scoring low right. Use the window. P.J. Hall with... 10 points. He's got a double-double. Not keeping track of rebounds, folks, but there's no doubt he's got 10 boards. <laughs> Had them all in the first half. Rook Tate, the ball handler here. And I believe we got a five-second call there. Yep, five-second call on Gaffney. So this will go back the other way to the Dorman Cavaliers. Dorman in the home whites. Here's Miles Tate, Coach uh, McCam from Gaffney telling us that Miles Tate's originally from Gaffney. Mm -hmm. And he moved to Spartanburg, not far here. So he said, yeah, those kids that have been at Gaffney scattered all over the upstate. Well, we get that <laughs> in the Columbia area That's with true. Blythewood, Westwood, Ridgeview, Spring Valley. Bucket and a foul. For Kamal Desour having a fine game tonight, the 6'5 senior for Dorman. And I just recognize that he has got frosted tips tonight as well. Boy, just crashes the glass there and the the way he slices to the basket in between two defenders. That's the third time he's done that here tonight. And DeSor will go to the line for the three-point play. He's still got 15 points after the miss. 61 points with five to play in the third in a high school basketball game. My goodness. <laughs> that is dominance and just outstanding basketball here played by the Dorman Cavaliers. Peeler drove and got stripped. Renwick got the reach-in foul there. Check it. It was Kamal DeSour picking up the foul. We haven't mentioned this factor with P.J. Hall and his recruitment, but talking with some of the media in the upstate, the Florida Gators may have a slight edge when it comes to recruitment because they have his big sister, Thayer Hall, the volleyball team. Emerson, one of the best female athletes I think I've covered in 10 years. Thayer Hall yeah. with the Dorman Cavs. Yeah, top volleyball player in the state. We've heard about her. Unbelievable. And uh, she's doing good things down with the Florida Gators. May want to join the family down in Florida. Never know. Yeah, the Hall family, very athletic indeed. Right wing three, Renwick in and out and in. Boy, that one finally rattled down. <laughs> you know, Hall in. Renwick. Hall and Tate have done their part, but it's been the role players once again. Renwick, oh my goodness. That Renwick bucket, the layup 
created by the Miles Tate deflection on the other end, and there's Tate assisting to Renwick for three. Again, we've talked about Hall and Tate. That have been the featured players of this team and of this year, but the role players have been so huge from DeSore and Renwick and even Earl Burgess with some big baskets as he knocks that one through. 51-point bulge for Dorman. Tyler, we figure, and here's another steal by Dorman. This is Miles Tate. Excellent play by Gaffney's Rook Tate. And that ball 360 around the rim and finally went in despite a good effort play by Andre Lindsay, the sophomore for Gaffney. Tyler, we were talking on the drive up here. Tyler and I rode together from Columbia tonight up to Spartanburg, and on the ride up, we were talking about the fact that we knew Gaffney was in a tough spot tonight as that one drops in for number 12. Spencer Robertson, the young 10th grader, having a good game tonight. Yeah, Spencer Robertson, that's his third bucket of the evening. Oh, and, and the foul. P.J. Hall doing more work for Gaffney. So we were talking about Gaffney being in a difficult spot tonight. There's the assist from Talon Cooper. Oh, and just fights his way through two defenders once again. How many baskets have we seen made in traffic, double teamed by these dormant offensive players? Yeah, Gaffney a team in transition, but I wanted to talk about what you and Coach McCam were discussing, the life skills class that Coach McCam has implemented in this basketball program, but you heard a little bit more than that uh, from what I could take. Yeah, this is the, the one significant addition to the program by Coach McCam, I would say, is the, and Hall draws another foul for Dorman, so he'll go to the line. Coach McCam in his first year, a 2003 Gaffney High School graduate, two-time state championship basketball player for the Indians. Left Gaffney High when he graduated, went to Benedict College in Columbia. Yep. Graduated there in 2008 and immediately returned to Gaffney and got a job on Mark Huff's staff. He was the C-team head coach, and he was an assistant for 10 years before he got the job. He's in his first year as the head man at Gaffney Basketball, and one of the first things he did on the new job, Tyler, is he created a life skills program for the basketball program at Gaffney High. Yep. Every kid in the basketball program, all the, the – the, Varsity, the junior varsity, and the, the B team, the eighth grade team, everybody comes in and they talk about personal development. The program is called Beyond the Game. And they meet once every two weeks. And they talk about, they talk about uh, athletic excellence, academic achievement, social responsibility, personal yep. development, Tyler. And, I think a lot of kids grow up thinking they're going to play in the NBA, and uh, for most of us, it doesn't turn out to be that way. I think it's kind of a humbling class telling you that, yes, basketball and sports is great, but there's also life outside of basketball. There's responsibilities and things that you're going to have to handle outside of the basketball arena. And McCain was very serious about it. He, you know, he said, you know, wins and losses are one thing, but life skills is what it's all about. And they say – High school prepares you for college. College prepares you for real life. Well, this is an, uh, a one-up, if you will, on preparing you for life after college. Gaffney three ball rimmed out on number five, Zach Harper. And I believe Harper was touching the sideline there and the basketball at the same time. So and One last thing on the life skills class. I also think it's going to bring a young team like Gaffney together. You know, a team in transition, first-year head coach, trying to figure out their identity, their direction. I think learning those things together is going to really help them in the long run to be successful in a year or two. You know, I, I would think I would make a case that a life skills program is as important as any curriculum in high school. Yep. And I don't know a lot of high schools that have programs like this, so I thought that was interesting talking with Coach McCann that that was his idea. That was the first thing he did. He wanted to initiate a life skills program, and the program is called Beyond the Game at Gaffney High. 13 with the layup for Dorman, and that is Treshawn Staggs. First look at him tonight. Got a spot for him on the all-hair team. <laughs> His first basket of the evening, and we talked about Dorman playing some younger guys uh, in this game that obviously has become a blowout for the Cavs. Is that a travel or a foul on the floor? I believe it was a foul on the floor. 
a lot of good hair in today's game. Uh, Tyler, you know, I'm a little bit older than you, and I'm on the wrong side of 40. And uh, back in the day, there were guidelines for for hair and for socks, and there are no more rules, no guidelines for hair or socks anymore. <laughs> Used to be, you know, you, you didn't wear just any kind, of, any kind of socks you wanted. They had to kind of match your outfit. Now, those days are over. You can wear anything you want with the socks. And you remember the Yankees in the 70s would not allow their players to use, have facial hair. Right. So there were rules all in certain areas, in all, certain segments of society. All of a sudden, this has become a Seinfeld episode. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's the hey, deal with socks. That's part of what makes high school basketball fun to me, man, is the hair. A lot of good hair, man. Lots of good hair, especially in the girls' game. But the guy's got it, too. I mean, look at the foul shooter here. The captain yeah. of tonight's all-hair team is the foul shooter, Andre Lindsay. We have the all-hair game here tonight. So the first free throw misses as you take a look at the Dorman bench. Let's do trivia here on Facebook Watch tonight. And again, NFHS Network Hoops here on Facebook Watch. Emerson Phillips with Tyler Cup and our crew from Play On Sports at the NFHS Network. Glad you're with us. Trivia time. All right, last season, Dorman hosted Spartanburg Day and Zion Williamson. How many points did Miles Tate score in the Dorman win? Oh, I was here. I called that game on Facebook Watch last year, and I don't remember the exact number. Tyler, I've got a ballpark figure. I'm going to write it down. Okay. This is, this is my best guess. I was here. I, I should remember, but I'm not exactly sure. That's what I'm going with. Lindsay hits the second. Oh, boy. Okay. It was in that vicinity. If memory serves, which it does. I'll give you a hint. It's more than what he's got tonight. <laughs> tonight, Miles State has, let's see here, eight points. And he's out of the game right now. And likely will be for the rest of the night, you would think. Left wing three ball off the mark by Pilgrim. And the impressive 10th grader Earl Burgess working for a rebound. We like this kid, Burgess. Yeah, I do too. He's not a main player for Gaffney, but he's a bench player. He's getting experience. and He's one of those guys that's actually, a body. He's a body down yeah, low. I, I should correct myself. He is a main player for Dorman. He's not a starter for Dorman, but he's the first big man off the bench. Yeah, he's a body down low, and look at him. Try to score the basket. Missed it there. But this is the experience these younger guys are getting. A 6'5 sophomore, Earl Burgess, coming off the bench tells you just how long, lengthy, and deep this Cavalier basketball team is. Take note, 5A, South Carolina basketball. All right. Nyan Peeler pats himself on the head to call the play, and that is a rise up three, knock it in, Nyan Peeler. Yeah, I like the look of Peeler as he reaches double digits on the night, the 6'2 senior. He was not a starter from a year ago, but he has had to come in and fill the gap. Next time Peeler pats himself on the head to call the play, watch out. <laughs> Look out for that three. <laughs> Double team in the block. Burgess able to muscle that shot up anyway. Good defense by Gaffney and a rebound cleared by Jeffries Fernandez, six foot junior. Peeler trying to take the ball game over for Gaffney. Now just hit that three. He's feeling good. Pilgrim, nice feed. Shot wouldn't go down for Dante. Make it Peyton Thomas. And another Gaffney foul coming up. There's Peyton Thomas. Thomas will go to the line and shoot two. Look at all that hair, man. It's thick. And one time I had that in high school. <laughs> now, not even close. Too much product in the hair. A lot of hair. And good touch at the line by Peyton Thomas, the Dorman senior, as Coach Ryan looks on. Assistance for... Dorman, Zach Rich, Brendan Marcel, Rod Sadler, John Storr, Scott Henry, Mitchell Moss. Got a question. How do you get all that hair in a hat? <laughs> you buy an extra large hat. <laughs> <laughs> Thomas Ryan, one of the great head basketball coaches in the state of South Carolina. I don't mean to show your age here, EP, but yeah. did you say you covered him in high school? Yeah, I was a sports editor at the okay. Lexington County Chronicle when uh, Thomas Ryan was in high school at Lexington High. Lexington had some outstanding basketball teams back then, and Thomas Ryan was a part of them. He was a good ball player in high school. I'll tell you what, his alma mater, Lexington's having a great year. Last I checked, I think they were 19-0. You know who he kind of reminds me of? He, he kind of reminds me of Jack Renwick. 
Although yep. I think Renwick is better than Coach Ryan was in high school. Don't, don't, don't tell Coach Ryan I said that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, these broadcasts are archived on Facebook Watch. No, 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 that's not. <laughs> now, we spoke with Coach Ryan before the game tonight, and he's a good fellow and a fine leader. That was a big block shot by Peeler there on the defensive end. In the basketball community here in South Carolina. And, boy, look at this margin. 55 points nearing the end of the third. How about three more? No. Mercifully for Gaffney, three-pointer off the mark there by Jordan Surratt, the young freshman for, Ga uh, for Dorman. So we'll get a break here. Start of the fourth quarter. Dorman, number one in South Carolina, class 5A round ball. Two-time defending state champs. NFHS Learning Center is the leader in online education for the interscholastic community. At NFHSLearn.com, you can find over 60 courses for coaches, administrators, officials, parents, students, and performing arts programs, including over 25 free courses such as concussion in sports, heat illness prevention, sudden cardiac arrest, and protecting students from abuse. For more information, visit the NFHS Learning Center. Start of the fourth quarter here, NFHS Network Hoops on Facebook Watch. And we got a blowout tonight, unfortunately, but still an entertaining night of basketball here in Spartanburg, South Carolina. And we asked this trivia question earlier, and we're about to see the answer. Last season, Dorman hosted Spartanburg Day and Zion Williamson. How many points did Miles Tate score in the Dorman win? Emerson Phillips was here for that game. He's got the answer right in front of me. Well, I, don't, I don't remember. I don't know if I got it exactly you got right. to be close, though. Let's see the guesses. All right, let's check the guesses first. And I'll give you my guess. Even though I was at 31 for Dennis Mintz. I, I guessed slightly more than that, Dennis. So you and I are about on the same page. <laughs> Dennis must have been on Facebook Watch last year for that game, and he was here. Tate put up 34. Zion put up 39. Jacob Plunkett wins the trivia contest. Yep. Which it helps. He was here. I was here. I didn't remember the exact number. Oh, that might be. Might be his mama, mama sister. Mama Tate, sister Tate. Hard to tell from the pick, and I haven't <laughs> met either one personally, so forgive me. <laughs> Career high, 34 points. I knew it was in the 30s. I guess 32, Tyler. You were close. 34, yeah. And you were here. But you've also done a lot of basketball between That's also true. then and now. <laughs> done quite a few Dorman games. I worked the Chick-fil-A Classic. Uh, did some internet broadcast for that tournament in Columbia. Started the day after Christmas, and Dorman won two games there and then lost in the championship game to Salesian from California, which was ranked number seven in the country at the time. I'm Dorman not, had a good tournament. I'm not sure what Dorman fans think. I'm not sure what Coach Thomas Ryan thinks. He would obviously know, but Dorman, we've talked about, are the two-time defending 5A state champions. This might be their best, and that's scary. Very scary. P.J. That's Hall a, makes them scary, and, you know, Kamal DeSore... And as you see, number 13, Treshawn Staggs with his second bucket of the night with Staggs. a drive-in lay-in. Yep, Staggs, two for two from the floor. But Kamal Desor makes them dangerous as a senior. Obviously, Jack Renwick, only a junior. Yeah, Hall, Tate, and Renwick are all just juniors. But they've got size off the bench with Earl Burgess as a sophomore. This is a very, very balanced, complete team as you take another look at Thomas Ryan there pacing the sidelines. He still looks stressed. <laughs> You're up 79-24. Calm down, Coach. We got it in the bag. I think you got it, Coach. Oh, rims in for the three-pointer. Straight ahead for Dorman. South Carolina Basketball Coaches Association poll that was released on Monday. Dorman is number one in Class 5A. Berkeley is two. Nation Ford three, Coach Ryan's alma mater, Lexington Wildcats are number four. And I believe they're 19 and 0. River Bluff is five, that's Lexington's rival. One of Lexington's rivals, new school over in Lexington County, River Bluff, been open what, four or five years now? Yep. Fort Mill is six, West Side seven, Blythewood eight. Blythewood's been in a title game, what, two years in a row? Mm -hmm. 
And I've seen Blythewood. Uh, they've got a young man who's headed to play for Iowa State, the Cyclones, Trey Jackson. And that's another very yeah. balanced and complete team. You may see them uh, in the state championship again. You may see a rematch yep. between Dorman and Blythewood. Blythewood's got uh, another graduate, Robert Braswell, a freshman at Syracuse this will. Syracuse just beat Duke the other night yep. in, uh, at Cameron Indoor. There's a layup off the glass. Who was that, 22? Jordan, Jordan Surratt. Surratt. Ninth grader. Yep. 6'3 freshman. Again, he's a good-looking player. Only a freshman. Jordan yeah. Surratt. He looks like an athlete, doesn't he? Yeah. Surratt, 6'3", and he's only you know, 14, 15 years old. All right, we want you to get involved. Facebook watches interactive viewing. Let's That's hear what we it. like about it. So we're going to go with the MVP tonight. want to hear from you. Comment below with your pick for MVP of today's game. All right, I'm going to write down mine, Tyler. <laughs> I'm going to write down mine. We might have the same one. Who do you Hard think the say. MVP of the game is? Hard to pick one tonight because it's been such a complete effort. I know. It really has. From top to bottom, it's been a complete effort. It started with that guy for yep. me. So that's who I'm going to go with. Yep. Mine's different, but oh, I, really? I can't go wrong with that Yours one. Yours is different. Yep. Well, maybe can't. you went with the guy that was from the one I wanted to go with, but I couldn't do it because I just couldn't deny this guy that I wrote down. You can't go wrong with that player, but we'll see what the <laughs> fans think on Facebook Watch. Interesting, interesting yep. to see how the fans will vote who the MVP is tonight. 86, 27, 59, and Gaffney cuts it to 57. Boy. Spencer Robertson with a shot off the glass. No question he has been... Uh, Gaffney's MVP. Peeler's had a good night as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and what has been a really rough night for Gaffney. I'm going to tell you what, friends. And, and there's another layup for Burgess. Yep. Cut yeah. to the basket from the baseline. And Gaffney actually had switched to a man-to-man -man defense that time. Yeah, Dorman's second unit breaking down the Gaffney defense. So Dorman had 54 at halftime. They might score 54 more in the second half. Dad, gum. 88-29. Earl Burgess, sophomore off the bench. He's got six. Here is Blake Tate, six-foot junior. Getting some playing time here. Knocks down the first free throw. 11 players. All right, Keandre Shippey's in the game, 6'3", junior. That's number 10 in the white jersey there for Dorman on the lane. Foul shooter here is Blake Tate. And I believe uh, Blake is the is cousins with Miles. We mentioned Miles is from Gaffney. That's right. And Miles for Dorman and Blake for Gaffney. They are cousins, according to Coach McCam for Gaffney. Going to the line will be Peyton Thomas. Look at all this here. Look at all this hair. How do you get that into a hat? Dominique Davidson. <laughs> you need two hats. <laughs> I don't think you wear hats if you're wearing uh, uh, hair like that, Tyler. It's true. I think you just the hat is left out of your wardrobe. That would be my guess. Never having had hair like that, I really don't know. The depth of this Dorman team is just crazy to me. You've got six three freshmen coming off the bench. Dorman bench, not worried about having too much hair, are they? <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding with those guys. I'm messing with those guys. Well, if Thomas Ryan comes <laughs> back and watches this broadcast. All right, 58-point lead here. Boy, look at this, 450 to play. They might ban you from Roebuck, Emerson. Dorman, no, nah, I think uh, <laughs> maybe a reprimand. That's what I'm hoping for, just a reprimand <laughs> rather than banishment. So it started with the half-court offense for Gaffney tonight. Tyler, we showed a, a nice package at halftime. Yeah. Video clips, highlights of Dorman working the ball around in the half-court set. And it was everybody in the floor touching the ball, getting involved, and it's just a well-coached and smart Dorman basketball team. Might have an injured player down for Dorman. Don't want to see that nope. ever, but especially in a game like this. So a timeout here with 4.19 left. Went down a little awkwardly there, but Earl Burgess is walking it off. Hey, fans, stay with the NFHS Network Hoops later tonight as California's top-ranked Sierra Canyon 
faces off against defending state champions Crossroads. Sierra Canyon led by highly rated guard Cassius Stanley, Scotty Pippen Jr. Emerson, and Kenyon Martin Jr. take an eight game winning streak into tonight's matchup. How about that? Scotty Pippen Jr., Kenyon Martin Jr. Wow. There's your standings here in Region 2 5A. Malden having a good year. The Mavericks 6 and 1 in region play, followed by Riverside, the Rebels of Burns, Bowling Springs, Spartanburg, Hillcrest, and Gaffney here tonight. Malden Mavericks beat Gaffney on Tuesday night. That was the game that uh, Stan Ellis re entered his knee in. Dorman Bench rises up for an air ball three. I believe that was Shippy that missed the three. And here is Austin, uh, Peyton Thomas trying to spin down low and find some space, but Gaffney gave none. So a good look at Dorman's Ty Pilgrim here. This is 22, Surratt over to Shippy who missed another three. Yeah, they're trying to get Shippy open on that perimeter. That's the third shot he's taken in this last sequence here for the Cavs, trying to get him involved and trying to get everybody into the scorebook. Gaffney trying to find a lane. A lot of the backups in for the Cavs. Stingy man-to-man -man defense for the Cavs. Foul on the baseline. Thank you, Adam. Watching from Gaffney, South Carolina. Thanks for the awesome coverage. Appreciate you watching on Facebook Watch. Thank you, Adam. Richard Woods, Gaffney in the rebuilding stage and a young team as we've talked about tonight. We'll keep them encouraged knowing that the future is very bright. Hashtag building character. That's exactly yeah. what uh, Coach talked about. That's right. Yeah, we appreciate that too, Richard. Thanks mm -hmm. for joining us tonight on Facebook Watch. Coach McCam said that very thing, building character here at Gaffney. Now, now those are the two that I was down to. Actually, Jacob, Jacob's on point. Neither of those are neither of those players are my MVP. You didn't pick either one of those nope. two. Did not pick PJ Hall or Jack Renwick. I mean, listen, they're great choices. You could have picked four different guys. Yeah, that's true. Great but choices. I, I, I wanted to go Renwick, and then I changed it to Hall. Mm -hmm. Because in the, in the early on, in the early stages, P.J. Hall. He set the tone. Got Exactly. He got things going for Dorman. Set the tone defensively, rebounding, and on the offense with not just his baskets low in the post, but also dishing it out, finding an open man. Gaffney drives here, and nice pass by Harper as he was jumping on the inline there. Dribble drive here by Lindsey. And Peyton Thomas draws a charge. I'll go ahead and give my MVP. It's Kamal DeSor. 17 points. Nice. You know, he was a guy that coming in, you know, we knew he was a starter in the lineup. You know, averages a little under 10 points a game. Comes in, and when P.J. Hall and Miles Tate get you involved, you need to make the most of that. And he absolutely did. I mean, he really got things started along with P.J. Hall in that first quarter. Yep. You're right, DeSore, 17 tonight. Big night for Kamal DeSore. Outstanding, Tyler. That's a good, that's a good call. So no shot clock in South Carolina high school basketball. There are a number of states that use a shot clock at the high school level. South Carolina is not one of them as Peyton Thomas knocks in a little fall away. Yeah, and you know, this is great about high school sports and Student athletes, guys that don't normally get this much playing time in a game. Use a shot clock at the high school level. South Carolina is not one of them as Peyton Thomas knocks in a little fall away. Yeah, and you know, this is great about high school sports and student athletes, guys that don't normally get this is great about high school sports and student athletes, guys that don't normally get this much. Though, and these guys are getting a chance to go in there and score and do some great things. Yeah, Darius, I'm not sure the exact number. I want to say it's 10 or 12, 10 or 12, and that, 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 was, that number may have increased no in shot the last clock? couple of years. States that don't have a shot clock, or excuse me, states that do have a shot clock, I think it's 10 or 12, 
South Carolina does not have a shot clock. But they are discussing it. We understand that yeah, yeah, in the meetings they have been discussing a yeah, shot clock for the state of South Carolina. It is on the table, that's for sure. Yep. And, you know, Tyler, I guess I'm old school, but I'm not a fan of it. I don't I, think you need a shot clock in high school basketball. I'm only not a fan of it because there's a lot of schools that aren't going to be able to afford them. There's the 1A and the 2A schools that don't have the big club boosters that can afford. I mean, yeah, I, th these are these are pricey things that you got to pay for. But I don't buy that. I don't you don't buy, buy that? I don't, I don't think there's a school in the state that can't afford two shot clocks, one okay. on either end of the gym. But now, I'm be, not an athletic director, and there may be ADs that say otherwise. They could be paying for other things, though. Well, I'm not going to dispute that, but we could talk about that with lots of different things. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> so shot clock's not a big concern. No, I'm okay think with it. I just it. don't think it's needed, and here's why. Uh, high school game is about developing fundamentals. I don't think there needs to be a race to get a shot off. You've got to take 45 seconds or a minute or two minutes or eight to get a good shot. I think that's okay. Emerson, that's my I, opinion. I see both sides, and I actually really like your side. I, I, I'm with that. That's just my opinion. I don't think there needs to be a race. I think you're going to see more poor shots, and you're going to see lower quality basketball. That's my guess. The turnaround one-handed J by Thomas. Peyton Thomas. You want to change the MVP vote? You still got time. <laughs> Peyton Thomas having a big fourth quarter. He's got six. Oh, Gaffney went for the dunk. Renwick. All right. Oh, uh, the truck cast the deciding votes in the MVP tonight. Hey, that's okay. <laughs> Listen, you could have gone with four different players and no argument from anybody in this gym. And Jack Renwick looks like he's going to be our MVP as we take a look at the Highlight package. Here's Ren Renwick from the corner for three. That was his first basket, I believe, of the night. Yeah, that was the first three of the night. for Dorman. Driving in with a teardrop. The floater gets it to go. And then here's another three from the wing. That Actually, earlier in the first quarter, he had that big block, remember, on defense. There's Tate's defense leading to the Renwick layup. There was a series, a sequence in the third quarter where Tate and Renwick hooked up like three straight trips for Renwick buckets. It was mm -hmm. it was good action. So Renwick is your MVP here on Facebook Watch and the NFHS Network. Dorman's going to come out of here with this win. Coming up next, watch Cassius Stanley, Kenyon Martin Jr., Scotty Pippen Jr., and Shakir O'Neal as Sierra Canyon takes on Crossroads on Facebook Watch. Might be tuning into that on the way back to Columbia. And we were at the... Uh, Peach Jam in Augusta, in North Augusta, South Carolina, last year, the big Nike event in the summer. And Shaq was there oh, watching wow. his son, Shakir. And I'm leaving the building after the last game ended. Shaq's son had just played, and the building's emptying out. Everybody's going through the same two doors. And I feel a hand on my back the size of, of like, Sasquatch. <laughs> and I look back, and I had to look up to the ceiling. It was Shaq put his hand on my back, to, to, and, I, and I got out of his way. Ball game's over here. 96-35, all Dorman Cavaliers tonight. Jack Renwick, our MVP, the boys in the truck, our crew casting the deciding votes tonight. Hey, we appreciate you chiming in on the comments section here on Facebook Watch. NFHS Network Hoops live tonight here on Facebook Watch for Tyler Cup. My name is Emerson Phillips, live broadcast tonight here in Spartanburg, South Carolina. Dorman is number one in the state in Class 5A, and they put a whooping on the Gaffney Indians tonight. Dorman gunning for three straight state titles come March.